Hello everybody, Tom Morley here from FOSS 365 where we use free open source software 365 days a year. A little while back I made a video on how to add your own effects to the Olive Video Editor and one of my subscribers, Dakota Bryan, asked me the question, well what if I wanted to use the variables to manipulate how the effects look that I put into Olive? How can I do that? And I'm going to show you in this video. So thank you, Dakota, for the suggestion and let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is take a look at the XML file and see how that XML file adds a GUI interface in Olive. So let's go ahead and open up Olive. Let's minimize this here. Let's open up Olive. Oh, wrong one. Hopefully that doesn't open another version of OBS. And did open up olive, so that's good. Let's take a look at this. Um, for now, let's just go ahead and create a um, new sequence. Just some basic setup here, just like in the last one. Let's add a solid color, just so that we have something to work with and something is over here, so that we can see the GUI. Um, we have um, a couple of different sections, a transform section and a solid section. And we know that um, with the community plugins that we saw in the previous video, how they work. So we can add something from the community. Let's just say something like glitch. Let's click on glitch here and add that. Let's delete this solid color because I don't need it. Um, delete, it can stay black. So let's look at this glitch section here. We see that there's a a mode or a type of um, effect that we want to apply to our video and it looks like it's a drop down box so there's a couple of different selections that we have and it looks like we also have an intensity and that t intensity is a decimal point value uh, float or a double right so we can adjust that and let's adjust it looks like the max I can adjust it is a 10 and the minimum that I can adjust it to is a zero. And when it first opened up, it was set at five. So there must be a default value for that as well as a default value for this one here called signal loss. So let's go ahead and look at the XML file and see if maybe we can put the pieces together and see how that XML file created the GUI interface in Olive. So let's take a look here. Let's um, open up a file manager. And um, <clears throat> I do have show hidden files on, just like in the previous video. Um, if you download the community plugins, the community plugins go in a certain folder. And that's a hidden folder in Linux, so I need to show hidden fi uh, files and folders. They'll have dots on them. We want to go to dot local and share. This is again where. Uh, the community plugin should be placed. You saw that in the previous video. And I'm going to go to effects and the Olive Editor Community Effects. That's where we'll find the um, community plugins that we added to Olive. And the one that I'm interested in is Glitch, right? Because we're looking at the, um, the Glitch section in Olive. So we don't care about the frag in this case. We just want to know how this XML file creates the GUI in Olive so that we can use it to manipulate some information. And uh, let's go ahead and open up the Glitch XML with mouse pad. And yeah, there we go. So it looks like this is just basic setup where it's telling me what XML version I have. And here it's saying my effect name is Glitch. So the name when I run Olive is going to be Glitch. Now where is that? glitch name going to show up that's going to show up under the category of community so let's just take a look at that and see if that's the case um, when we click here we have community and glitch should be underneath that and it is so the xml is saying that there's going to be a community folder and glitch is going to be underneath there so that part of it is fine um, no problem with that so let's go back to the file and let's see what we see here okay so we have the a row and the very first rows name is going to be mode and look at that it is right here 
and it's going to be a type. What kind of type is going to be here? It looks like it's going to be a combo box. Field type is a combo. So that's what's here is a combo box. And in that combo box, it's going to be, have a default value of zero, which is going to be the very first um, selection that you have in your XML file for options, which is going to be signal loss. You see that here. But you also can put many options here. If I wanted to add another one, um, I could just add another option here and it would show in the drop down. So let's go ahead and do that. It's not going to it's not going to work at all. Right. We'll just um, just copy all this right here. And we'll paste it here. And we're going to just put better TV. Maybe I created effects called better TV. Um, and now I can save that. Now that should show up in this drop down, but what I'll have to do is I'll have to, um, I believe I'll have to actually close Olive and load it back up again. Cause I think that's when it looks at the XML file, but we'll check and see before I dump out of uh, Olive and see. And we looks like we also have what I say here, a float or a double, some kind of decimal point value. So the very next row is gonna be called intensity, which it is here and there's the value. It's going to be the type of double, which is a decimal point. The minimum value is a zero or the maximum value is five. Uh, or not maximum value, sorry about that. Default value is five, maximum value is 10. And we saw that because you know we could go from zero to 10 here. And when it first started up, that was five. So we see how we can add um, rows underneath whatever our section is. We've got a glitch section with a couple of rows and a couple of different values here that we can change based on how we define them in here, right? And then of course the last one just executes the shader. So in this one, this is how we create um, an interface with Olive so that we can change the variables in our frag file, right? So I guess, let's see, we've got a signal loss, right? As far as field type name. So let's Let's see if that actually that added one, the better TV actually shows up. Let's file save. So I think I saved it, but I'm not positive. Well, let's remove this glitch. Let's delete it. Let's add it again. Um, community glitch. And let's see if it's in here. And it is actually didn't have to shut it. So shut it off. So we've got a signal loss, uh, bad TV, worse or better. So I just added that better TV. Now, if we select it, uh, the code's not going to work because there is no better TV option in the frag file, right? So let's take a look at the frag file. Um, open it with mouse pad and just take a quick look at this. And we should see that the variables that we want to use that we defined in, in the XML for Olive should be in here defined as well, right? So. Um, Let's see if that's the case. Um, looks like we got a, a couple of uniforms in here. Let's see. I want to see where it is in here. All right, where are we using it? Oh, is that mode? Okay. So let's see. We are calling it um, the name for it, right? Right here, we've created a combo box default zero and the ID is mode. So that's important here. So that means that in my code, in my frag, the ID for this variable is going to be mode. And you see that I am using that in here, right? We had three different options. So if it was mode zero, then it's going to execute this code in the, um, in the frag file, right? And if it's bad TV, well, then it's going to execute mode one, right? Because we're starting at zero, so zero would be signal loss. Mode one would be bad two and mode three would be worse TV. So you're seeing, you're seeing how that works and um, how that interacts with the, the, fr the frag file here. So worse TV would be zero, one, two, right? So there should be a, a, 
mode two section in here and there it is it's down at the bottom here mode two and that would be executed if we selected worst tv so you're seeing in the xml how we define the variables to use in our frag file and how we define how it shows up in the olive Ed editor um, a lot of information there but basically what i wanted to do is i just wanted to take this information that i showed you and create a very simple gradient background for olive so that i could have a color on the top and a color on the bottom now there's a couple of ways i could have done that i could have done that with a um, decimal point or a float or a double value like um, like you see here I could use that double value to um, just use a value between 0 and 1 to modify the, the color of red green and blue but there's a better way there's actually the ability to use a color uh, color type here that basically gives you for free the color picker and an olive so that's pretty cool let's take a look at that because i've already created this um, gradient background that you can use just re-download the community file if you haven't already so um, let's go ahead and close this and let let's look at the uh, the one that i created here let's go to the gradient again this is very simple impl implementation so let's go ahead and open up the, the gradient XML and take a look at it. And you're going to see, before I even look at Olive, we should be able to tell from the XML what this is going to do in the GUI in Olive, right? So we've got an effect, and the effect's name is going to be gradient in Olive. Um, where, it's, where is it going to be located as far as the category? Looks like it's going to be listed in the community category. So when I hit the drop, uh, the, the plus sign in olive and go down to the community category, I'm going to see my gradient effect in there, okay, because I'm defining it here. Now, I want a row and the first row is going to be called the, the top color. So I'm going to see a row and on the left I should see top color. And what kind of type is this going to be in the GUI? It's going to be a color type. Now, what that means is that um, I'm going to be able to click on this um, GUI this, the called color, and it's going to pop up a um, window for me to be able to select a color, which is re really cool. That way I don't have to work with a floating point value and um, adjust the red, the green, and the blue values on my own. It's going to do it with that GUI, which is pretty cool. Um, I want a default value when this first starts up, and it looks like I'm setting red to zero, green to zero, and blue to zero. So when I first start this up, um, it's just going to be black at the top, right? And I also have a ID here called top. Now, what does that mean? This ID called top, top is the name of the variable that I'm going to use in my gradient so that um, the gradient can interact with the GUI and Olive, right? Okay. And I'm also going to see a bottom color um, row in the GUI and Olive. And uh, it's going to be a type color, so it's going to be another color picker. And I'm going to set everything to zero, which is going to make it black, right? And I have an ID of bottom for that. So I'm, in my frag file, I'm going to have two variables that I'm going to be able to adjust with the GUI in Olive. It's going to be the um, top variable and the bottom variable. And of course the shader, this just tells it where to find the file. You, you know all about that from the last video. So let's take a look at the frag file before I even look at um, Olive here. Let's go ahead and open this frag file. And it's pretty simple, but it, it's great because it's going to show you basically um, how the XML is interacting with the frag file, right? So I know that I should have a top and a bottom variable in my frag file that's interacting with the GUI and Olive. So let's go over here and look and yep, looks like I got a uniform vector three called top. Now vector three from, if, if you don't know, is three different values, three different um, floating values. So I got a, with a vector three, I'm, I can set a um, red color a green color and a blue color. Okay, so that's all that's saying right there. So I also defined another uniform in my code, which is a vector three for, you know, red, green, and blue, and it's going to be called bottom. 
So in here, the only thing that I'm doing, um, I'm doing some other things, normalizing things, but in here somewhere, I should be defining the top color and the bottom color, and there it is. So I'm gonna create a vector four called top color. And in that top color, that's going to um, contain a vector four where I create a very, I've created the variable top, which is a vector three, right? That's, that's red, that's green and blue. And then I have the number 1.0, which is another decimal point or floating uh, value here, right? And why is that? Because when this runs, okay, and you'll know this if you go look at, um, go look at Shader Toy and, and um, uh, I think there's a tutorial shader in there that'll go all, uh, tell you all about um, um, open, uh, GLSL shaders. But basically um, this, program is expecting to return to Olive a value that has four different um, floating point or decimal point values. Uh, it'll be a red color, it'll be a green color, it'll be a blue color, and it's also expecting an alpha value where um, it will go from zero to one. Okay, So you need all four of those things. So that's why I'm taking the um, RGB values of top and adding a 1.0 because if, if I didn't do this it would just air out it wouldn't work right so I'm telling it to use whatever color that I select in the GUI of Olive and um, make sure that my alpha is um, totally opaque that is I can I can see the color 100% right um, because it, one would be 100% zero would be totally transparent I could see right through it so and you could change that if you wanted to come in here and mess with it you would see that um, if you put 0.5 it would kind of be halfway between um, opaque and transparent so um, and then I've got the the bottom color right I'm doing the same thing I've created a vector 4 called bottom color and I have a vector 4 here where I'm throwing in the RGB colors of my bottom uh, value and then my alpha as well right so pretty simple program and when I run out of here you're gonna see that I, I get exactly what I'm talking about so if I go to community and I go down to gradient you'll see that it popped in here a gradient right um, doo -doo 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 -doo. let me go to the XML because you know I want to make sure that you see this and you understand this so that um, I created a effect called gradient under community and that popped it, the gradient effect in here and then I have it row name top color right there the field type in this GUI is of type color there it is and it's default color of red or uh, red green and blue or zero so it's black and uh, again the idea of top so that it can use top in the in the frag file so now if I click on this Look at that, pops up that GUI is talking about, so I don't have to worry about changing the red, green, and blue color. I can just select the color, click select and okay, and check that out. Now I got a um, orange top and a black background. Maybe I want the bottom to be white. So now you, you've got a really nice um, orange to white background here that you can do all kinds of cool things. And uh, you'll see that um, I did here is, you know, just something simple as you just now you have that transparent background. You can add a couple of um, text effects in there, one being the shadow and uh, one being the font in front of it. You can do um, something simple. And then you can put the last video and this video together and have a cool effect on the background, um, as well as my gradient with the text running on it. So um, hopefully this helped you out there, Dakota. I hope this explained it a little bit for you and you got something out of it. And don't forget to subscribe. I got a lot more stuff coming out and I'll see you in the next one.